We are inside State Superior Court. This is Chris Canning reporting for Wolfpack Reality TV. This dispute has been going on for two years now, and the parties have been waiting for their day in court. Because there are so many cases that are tied up in litigation, the usual delay is two years. The parties met face to face and tried to mitigate the dispute. They could not agree. So we begin here today in court where we have selected the 12 members of the jury. The plaintiff is seeking money. He claims half the business and the business profits as the sole heir to his dead wife, who was a 50% business partner in the business with the defendant. The defendant owns a now very successful business known as the island. The defendant says that his partner never intended for her spouse to destroy the business. We now enter the courtroom as the bailiff opens the proceedings. All rise. Oh yay, oh yay, oh yay. The district court for the County of Wolfpack is now open for the regular dispatch of business. The Honorable Carol Marshall, now present and presiding, draw near and be attended. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, so glad to see you made it back another day. I admonish you to be careful. As you know, you are not to discuss the case during any breaks. After you have heard the witnesses, examined the evidence, and listened to the attorney's closing arguments, you may deliberate and discuss the case among yourselves freely. Any motions from the defendant? No, Your Honor. Any motions from the plaintiff? No, Your Honor. Very well. You may begin. The plaintiff calls Skipper Dyson to the stand. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to so help you? Sure. You may sit in the witness chair. State your name for the record, please. I'm Skipper Dyson. How do you know the defendant? He's my dead wife's business partner for the past five years. What brings you to court today? Well, after my wife died, I went to this man and asked him for half the money. You see, when my wife and, and, and him started the business, the past four and a half years, they, they, they haven't really done that well. But the past six months, they've done really well, and I want half the money. What happened when he asked for accounting of the profits? Well, Andy said that I was sleazy and that I wasn't going to get a dime of his money. He said I was a sleazy spouse. Permission to approach the witness? Mr. Dyson, this is a previously marked document. Do you know what it is? Yeah. What is it? It's a copy of my wife and I's marriage certificate. Okay. We would like to have this received into evidence as plaintiff's exhibit number one. The document will be admitted into evidence as Plaintiff's Exhibit 1. Your Honor, that's all the questions at this time. Defendant, the witness is with you. Skipper, what do you do for a living? Now? Yes. Now. Well, I plan to live off my wife's money. What did you do before you met your wife? Do I have to answer that? Yes, you do. Well. In the summertime, I cleaned swimming pools. And in the winter, I did a lot of favors for single women. How long did you know your wife before you got married? Full week. That's pretty quick, isn't it? Not really, if you're good. If you're good at what exactly? I'm good in the romance department, if you know what I mean. How long have you been married before your wife died? We got married at 5 o'clock on that Saturday, and then we all Went to the bar later for, for drinks and a party. You see, I was supposed to be Mr. in the Mr. Muscle show at Myrtle Beach the next day. See, I work out. What education and training do you have? I made it all the way through the eighth grade, thinking about getting my GED. I have really no special skills, but I'm good at what I do. When exactly did you leave for Myrtle Beach? We left, we left at nine o'clock that night. Got in the accident probably about 9.15, and at 9.30 my wife was dead. No further questions, Your Honor. Plaintiff, you may cross-examine. 
Mr. Dyson, did your wife have a will? No. Did your wife have a partnership agreement? What is that? Never mind. Did she have any type of insurance? Well, we had... She had $5,000 in auto insurance. Did she have any life insurance? No. No further questions. No redirect, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Dyson, you may sit down. Plaintiff, you may call your next witness. Plaintiff calls insurance agent Lori Anderson. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the whole truth, so help you? I swear. You may sit in the witness chair. Please identify yourself. My name is Lori Anderson. I'm with Campbell and Evans Insurance Agency. What type of insurance do you handle? We handle all types of insurance. Auto, home, business, boat, motorcycle, and life insurance. How did you know the defendant? Andy and his partner I met in college. We were students there and we met in Dr. Campbell's business law class. Did you handle all of the insurance for Andy? Yes. What kind of insurance did they have? Because they had many retail locations at the shopping centers, they needed premise liability insurance. What is that? Premise liability insurance protects the business owner if a customer gets hurt on the business site. Any other insurance? Yes, I also handled their automobile insurance for their personal cars. Did the partnership have any business life insurance for the two owners? We had discussed business life insurance. We knew that the insurance would protect the partnership if one of the partners died unexpectedly. But the business was struggling financially and the business required a lot of money to keep up with technology. What kind of business was this? Andy and Paula opened up the island at Crabtree Valley Mall. It was a place where men and board shoppers could go and, you know, hang out, surf the internet, play games, and just have some alone time while other people shopped. Was the business successful? Not for a really long time. Andy and Paula could only pay each other minimum wages. They worked four days on, three days off with no vacation. They both came in on Saturdays, and I know that Andy stayed with his family, and Paula also stayed with hers. Was this strictly business, or... Um were they romantically involved? They were just really good friends. They were more like brother and sister. You know, they, they treated each other with respect, but they never went out or anything. Why did they not get business life insurance on one another? Paula said they were young and didn't need it. She said that the business couldn't afford life insurance. No further questions, Your Honor. No cross-examination. You may be seated. That will be the evidence for the plaintiff. Defendant, call your first witness. We call Andy Whitmore. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the whole truth? I swear. You may sit in the witness chair. Please identify yourself. My name is Andy Whitmore. How do you know the defendant, Skipper Dyson? I don't know him very well. He met my business partner, Paula, at a party on Saturday. Uh, they went out a couple times that week. On Thursday, they got engaged. Uh, that Saturday, they were married at 5 o'clock. Were they going on their honeymoon? Not right away. <laughs> she had to pay $500 for him to get into his muscle competition in Myrtle Beach. So after the wedding, they left at 9 o'clock. They got in their accident, and at 9.30, they announced that she was dead. What was the name of the business that you and Paula had together? So you know, we have to turn this partnership agreement in in two days. I have no clue. You got any ideas? It's definitely not going to be a landscaping business. <laughs> Dr. Campbell wants something new and creative that satisfies a niche in the marketplace. God, I had no clue. And of course he'd want something new and creative. I've been at the mall shopping all day with my mom. I hate that place. I hate to shop. <laughs> That's it. That's our business. Our business? There's a need in the marketplace. 
a need in the marketplace. Yeah, we could have a business at the mall. Hmm. People could check their email like an internet cafe or watch the big game or play video games or even get a massage. That would have been nice. I would have been in there all day. I like it. We could call it the island. It would be like an oasis for people that hate shopping centers. I like it. I think we should do it. Okay. Cool. Paula named it. It was the island. Did you make any money? Not really. Um, it was really slow getting it started. We had five locations. You know, we've replaced the computers every year. Uh, the flat screen TVs, we had 60 inch plasmas. They were really nice, but they were also very, very expensive. Did you break even? Uh, towards the end, we were starting to break even. Uh, we got really lucky. Uh, we had someone approach us about uh, kind of a joint venture. They wanted us to open 37 more stores. At the time, we had five in North Carolina. Uh, they gave us a hefty down payment to go start some new stores, so we spent all that money opening up new stores, and we were starting to break even. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination by the plaintiff. Mr. Whitmore, did uh, Skipper Dyson, the plaintiff, come to see you? Uh, yes, he did. Uh, he waited one day. He came the day after her funeral. Uh, he asked for, to see the books and for half the money. Did you share any financial information with the plaintiff? Uh, no, I did not. Um, he didn't deserve it. He just showed up, asked for the money. He didn't do anything. He didn't deserve the money for doing nothing. No further questions. That will be evidence for the defendant. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is time for closing arguments. I admonish you that these arguments are not evidence. They are only the opinions of the attorneys. In your deliberations, you will only consider the evidence received in this courtroom. Plaintiff, as the moving party, you decide to go first or last. What is your choice? We will defer our closing argument, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Defendant, time for your closing address to the jury. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have heard the evidence. This man is nothing but a scoundrel and a cheat and a lie. He's a gentleman of the night. He preyed on a lonely, rich woman. He married her and struck the jackpot. She died four hours later. So now he wants half of her business. He doesn't deserve it. He's not a businessman. It's her partner that deserves every penny of what happened. It would be injustice if you gave him a dime. Paula Warren would be turning over her grave if you did so. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, today you all have heard the insurance agent saying how hard Paula worked for her money. You also heard that she was in business law class, which means she knew about business life insurance, and she chose not to get it. If she wanted the insurance, her and Andy would have purchased it. Her spouse, Skipper Dyson, is entitled to half of the money. That's the simple truth. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have heard all of the evidence. It is now time for your deliberations. The first thing you should do when you get to the jury room is elect a four person who will guide your deliberations. You may now exit to the jury room. Have you reached a decision? We have reached a unanimous decision. We find... You have heard all the evidence in the case of the sleazy spouse. How would you decide? Email your opinion to ron underscore campbell at ncsu.edu. For Wolfpack Reality Television, this is Chris Cannon reporting.